Welcome to part one of Unity 2D Basics. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Entity Component System model. Entities are containers with unique identification. There could be multiple entities within the model, and if so, each is uniquely identified. Each entity is also a container holding components. Each entity is composed of different components. There are entities which contain components. Systems, the third, com third concept in this trifecta, interact with components within entities. Entities contain components, and systems interact with components matching themselves. How does a system know which component to talk to? Well, let's ground this conceptual model of entity component system within a slightly more generic idea of a game engine. A game engine may have multiple systems. These could include a physics system determining if objects overlap, an input system detecting if a player has pressed a button, for example, and a rendering system drawing assets to a screen. So we have here three different systems, physics, input, and rendering. So let's take these three systems here and map them to the entity component system model. Well, systems know which components to talk to because they share the same name. So a physics system would talk to a physics component, an input system would talk to an input component, and a rendering system would talk to a rendering component. Now again, an entity contains all of these components, physics, input, and rendering components, and each system in turn only talks to those components. One way to think about this is that components are tuned to, in a radio metaphor, only a particular system. It is only listening for messages from that system. So, from a system to its corresponding component. So, this was a more generic version of a game engine. Let's talk about how Unity views this model. In Unity, entities are called game objects. These are the default entities within Unity. They are containers for components. So, game objects in Unity and components and systems. When something happens as a game is running, an event occurs. This is something happening. For example, a user may press a key, click a button, or two game objects may overlap as part of a physics system. These are all examples of an event, which is just a way of describing something happens. When something happens, an event, Unity passes information from the system, again, physics, input, rendering, to the matching component of the game object. So, for example, if two objects, both of which have physics components, overlap, then the physics system would tell the physics components that an event had occurred. Or, if a entity had a input component, then if the player pressed a button, then the input system would tell the input component of that entity that something had happened. So, putting these all together, we can add a behavioral script component to a game object that acts as its game logic. So, we have a game object with a component, a behavioral script, as its game logic. So when the game object receives an event via one of its components, again thinking of the examples of a physics system, input system, and rendering system, then it checks its script to know what behavior it should do. So the behavioral script component acts as a game logic for that entity. Let's look at a model of this. In this model right here, the player has pushed a button. The input system sends a message to the input component, which the game object then 
detects and then tells, in this example, to move something on the screen as part of the rendering component of the game object. This then talks to the rendering system. So the player presses a button, the input system sends an event to the input component, which then sends an event to the game logic. The game logic makes a decision. It sends a message to the rendering component, which sends a message to the rendering system. Again, interconnecting the trifecta of concepts of entity, component, and system. Multiple systems are running, and the systems only talk to, communicate with, their corresponding components as part of entities. Let's look at Unity for just a second here, and then in future videos, we'll talk more about the editor itself. When we look at Unity, we actually see the rearrangement of the three concepts. So instead of showing entity component system, it shows entity system components. Let me show you what I mean. Over here in the hierarchy view, and again, we'll talk about this more in a future video, we'll actually see our game objects. Right here in the middle as part of the scene or game area, we'll see our systems. And over here on the right hand side as part of the inspector view, we will see its we will see the components corresponding of the game objects when selected. So for example, if I over here select a game object, main camera, we over, over here see its components of transform and camera. Notice the little drop downs signaling these are different components of the game object. So let's go back to the example. We see here again, entity component system and unity of entities, game objects made of components, in this example, physics, input, and rendering, and each system, physics, input, and rendering, only communicating with the corresponding components within a game object, which are the entities within Unity. This is a complex series of ideas, but everything in Unity is based on this model. Different game objects have different components which listen to or communicate with other corresponding systems. In fact, as we'll see moving into the next video, as we start to understand the Unity editor, we will actually see these concepts within the user interface of Unity itself. We will select different game objects and then edit the components of game objects by looking at the systems those components match. This will make more sense as we look at the user interface of Unity again in future videos, but this first video introduces us to this model, Entity Component System, and helps us see an example of it, for example right here on the slide, and helps us conceptualize what future videos will then walk us through when we write code, the game logic, to do this very example I've outlined right here. Thank you for watching.